You can almost taste the hot dogs and french fries they sell.
welcome every kind of amen in this place. Our four-legged relatives are welcome. And then those pods get together with other pods and they create community and they travel together and do all kinds of stuff. But the thing that fascinates me most is they talk to each other with their own language. So they know exactly what to do. They call out to one another and wait for the other to answer so they know where they are. The kids are going to let me make a whole fool of myself. <laughs> Grown-ups, help us out. <laughs> How do you think a dolphin says, I love you? In its language. In its language. What do you think it would be? Now, when you were little, you didn't have words. You just had sound. And still, we have, we have sounds that are one sound, but we can use it for lots of things, right? And we communicate by how that, cha that sound changes. We start learning words, and things get kind of complicated. But when we're little, we just have our sounds. We just have our sounds. Like, grown-ups, we still do it. Don't think it's over, because we go, oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Same sound, all different meanings. What I want you to think about across this summer is as we travel about and do our adventures, we need to remember the kind of sounds that help us find our way back to each other. That could be one. We can make all kinds of sounds to communicate how we feel. But best of all, we can just say, I love you, have fun. And when we see one another again, we can say, welcome to I'm going to give you a little something. I want to help you remember what we're doing. Here's your own dolphin to keep, whoops, to keep for the summer. So every time you see it, you can put it on your backpack. You can put it on your dresser. Every time you see it, they're tangled up. See, they get together and they never part. <laughs> every time you see it, you can remember. <laughs> and, <we're laughs> and we will be waiting for you right back here at River of Grass. Let's sing our youngins to class. We love you and bless you and send you on your way. We love you and bless you today and every day. We love you and bless you and send you on your way. We love you and bless you today and every day.
westernmost Oklahoma town near the border of the Texas Panhandle. Now some kids might have taken that for some kind of signal, but we had moved so many times in my life it was no big deal. Sure enough though, it was time for my first visit home from school and it occurred to me I didn't quite know where to go. Now getting to the town was no problem because like a lot of towns in Oklahoma you just got on I-40 and head out. And so I did, and I arrived in this small town on the westernmost part of Oklahoma about dinner time on a Friday evening. I had their address in hand, but no way to find it. Yes, kids, there was a time before GPS. <laughs> and a town too small to have a street map. So, as was the norm for that era, I stopped in an historic artifact known as a phone booth. <laughs> and I called my parents and asked for directions to their house. What we joked about is that the town was small enough that I could have just stood at the intersection of Main and I-40 and hollered. <laughs> and they would have hollered back and I could have followed their voices home. So it was for me on one of my first life adventures leaving home and finding my way back. And so it is that I have been adventuring for so long now that part of me still sings out and waits to hear their voices. And I always will. So how do we find our way? when we are off on our life's adventures? How do we find again where home is when we have ventured forth and dared to go a new place, meet new people? And that just doesn't mean in the body, that also means in the mind and in the spirit. What if we're trying out new ideas to see how they fit, if they are truthful and meaningful in our lives? and then need to find our way back to our spiritual home. Well, we can do like the dolphins do. Some dolphin facts. Dolphin species fam the dolphin species family runs from the largest cousin, the orca whale. Did you know they're related? Y'all probably did, y'all scientists, some of you. <laughs> to the very smallest, called the Maui dolphin. Now, porpoises are not dolphins, but they are part of that family. Dolphins are mammals like we are who give birth to their young and then those young stay near them for five to six years, very much in the same pattern we humans follow and keep our young ones with us for the first five or six years. Dolphins are highly social and have both family and community structures known as pods as we were talking about with the young ones. 
Dolphins bond in pods of five or 15, and then pods join with other pods and merge to travel together. Dolphins sleep about eight hours a day, like we wish we could, and they spend the rest of the time traveling for food, for climate, for fun. They can travel some 80 miles a day. But some of the larger of the dolphin family, the orcas, do huge migrations, and they can travel up to 6,000 miles in a season. So with all this moving about to feed and to breed, how do they manage to keep together? How do they keep from getting lost? Well, they don't. Sometimes they do lose one another. Sometimes they do get lost. So then how do they find their way back to their pods? They have their sounds. Now, dolphin communication and human communication are not all that different, including in their importance to how we work together in community as we get to know one another's voices and listen for one another's truths. Dolphins use their sounds to socialize and to play and to hunt and to bond and to travel, to make their way around obstacles and avoid danger, and to find their way back to one another. Scientists call it echolocation, sending out sounds that echo back and tell them where they are and help them get where they need to be. So far, we've been noting the ways dolphins are like us. After all, the latest research does indeed indicate that their intelligence is second only to ours on this earth. But I'm wondering how we could be more like them. Consider the wisdom of Douglas Adams' fourth book in his Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy series entitled So Long and Thanks for All the Fish. On the planet Earth, Adam's story says, man had always assumed that he was more intelligent than dolphins because he had achieved so much. The wheel, New York, <laughs> war, and so on. Whilst the dolphins, all they had ever done was muck about in the water and have a good time. But conversely, the dolphins had always believed that they were far more intelligent than man for precisely the same reasons. And so once more we arrive at summer, our a time our social patterns give us a break from academics, time for travel in body or in spirit, because for sure some of the best travels are just lying on the grass in my own backyard just watching the sky and letting my mind go where it will. Time for exploration and adventure, also in body or in spirit, to encounter new people and new places, new ideas, new possibilities. And of course, sometimes we take for granted that we live in a destination, y'all. A place that people like my family in Oklahoma would save for years just to come for a week to get to see the Atlantic Ocean once in their lifetimes. And we live here. How many of you find you hardly ever go to the beach much anymore except when you have out of town guests? <laughs> yeah, me too. And it used to tickle me when our sons did the thing that young people have to do to head into adulthood, protesting that they just had to get out of here. <laughs> when here was Miami with a beach, with an ocean, with no winter. <laughs> so what did they do? They both chose places with winter. New York and Switzerland. They just couldn't seem to think because they grew up here that this is the place, this is a place folks want to escape to, not from. So what might your summer be this year? Will you explore new sites? Will you explore new insights? Across miles or across ideas? 
You know, there's a library right next door to us, to the west. Across new cultures, right here in this diverse South, South Florida land that we live in. And then comes summer's end, how will you find your way back? Here to this place, this faith, this beloved community, the river of grass, this home. What songs would you listen for? If you were a dolphin, what sounds would you wait to hear to know that you are home? What clicks and whistles? What would guide your way? Could it be gathered here in the mystery of the hour? Or maybe come, come, whoever you are. Or maybe spirit of life, come unto me. Or maybe, oh, let us gather at this river. What will you sing out and wait to hear coming back to you? Maybe it's just when you come through the door and we smile because we're glad to see you again. Whether it was last Sunday, or last night, or last year. What song of your own heart led you here in the first place? This morning, 20 years ago. Whatever it might be, as we head into summer, let us each set our spiritual GPS look here, this room, this people, this congregation. Let us dare to set out in body or in spirit, embrace whatever adventure summer might hold for us, trusting that the eco-locations of our hearts can help us find our way around whatever obstacles might be there to bring us back home. And just like the kids, I saw y'all getting jealous. <laughs> just like the kids, we have a little something to help you remember how to make your way back. Put them on your, put them on your backpack, put them on your rear view mirror, put them on your carry-on luggage. Put them on your nightstand. Put them on your key ring. Just a little token to remind you that your pod is waiting for you here. Always. We'll be listening for your song. To sing it back to you. Especially if you've forgotten what it is. We'll be here for that too. If your summer is more about climbing mountains of the mind and crossing miles, remember that services continue here all summer with some terrific lay-led services and children's fellowship. I've seen the lineup, and I'm wishing I could be here for them. We continue to feed all year round our bodies and our spirits. And really, the way the world is right now, we need our echolocation skills to stay oriented. <coughs> toward the love that guides us through every season, every day, all our lives. Now the wind blows with soft, relaxing warmth. The sun beats down, the schools are out. Children swarm in the playgrounds and the streets. An eager city folk vacation bound crowd the broad highways, the lakes, and the seashores lose their solitude, and all the world seems to turn to carnival. Out of ourselves. What of ourselves? There could be now deep peace, a time for soul searching, 
we might turn to examine our own lives, to sort and probe our tendencies of thought, to sift the true from the false in the things of doubt, the beautiful from the ugliness unmarked. The sun beats down, it is a time for pause. Even the trees seem resting for a time, as if to meditate and gather strength for the more strenuous times that lie ahead. And shall not we? Here's this unfinished clay, this half molded, that still waits on us to think what we have been, as we are, and still yet to become. Whatever your summer adventures, know that I carry you with me in my heart every day, every moment, everywhere. I'll be listening for you when we come together again. I'll see you Labor Day Sunday, and we'll get with these strenuous times that lie ahead. Find a way to rest your body and your spirit. Watch the clouds. Go to the beach. And if you're listening for a song, that might yet be the one that can call you back home. Maybe it's this one. Please rise as we sing together. We go home.
back out into the world. Let us hold before our vision a world transformed and know our part and dare to do it, to make it real. Until we meet again, shine on.